Hi, I'm Kevin Lavery, and in this week's video for Educators Class, we're going to be looking at editing our rough cut together. While we're doing this, we're going to be observing a few rules or concepts associated with filmmaking. The first of which is the 180 degree line rule, which is a rule for establishing and maintaining screen direction so that your subject or what you're filming is always facing the same direction so your audience doesn't get disoriented. The other one is the concept of coverage, where you film a coverage shot which establishes where everything occurs and then use cut-ins or cutaways to break the action up. The other thing we're going to be looking at is editing on motion or editing on action, cutting on action. And this is a way to this is a way to maintain momentum through your project so that it doesn't look like things stop and start and it keeps the pace going. All right, so we've already established where everything sits in the workspace in Premiere. I'm going to right click down in my project window and press import to import my footage in. I've got my whole project set up in one folder. This is a really good way to work because it means that if you ever need to move or archive your project, you don't lose stuff. Everything's there with the project. So I've got my audio folder, it's got my music in it, got my stills folder for any stills, and I've got my video folder, it's got all my video. I'm going to select this and import it all in. All right. I've got this set on tile view. You can also set it to list view, but I find tile view or icon view a little bit easier to work with because I can see my footage, especially as I don't really label things very well when I get them off my camera. In terms of the camera that I use for this, it's just an iPhone, nothing fancy, just an iPhone with a Manfrotto tripod mount so that I could mount it to a tripod. Means you get nice quality footage without much effort. One of the reasons I like icon view is that I can review my footage just down here in the little icon. So I can see what's in this one, I can see what's in this one. I can see that this one, which says it's only four seconds long, doesn't have much going on in it. So I can just delete that one, get it out of my project. All right, so if we have a look at this one, you'll see it's got me walking in and pressing the list and walking out. It establishes all the action. This is what we we're talking about with coverage. We've got two versions of this. I'm going to open this one out in the source window. The only difference between them is that in this one I press the button to pull the lift. And I don't exit. Because I could only call the lift once so that I didn't cause problems for the other people working around me. So we're going to use that one to establish some of the actions and use the end of this one to establish the rest of them. So I'm going to piece together these two coverage shots that cover the whole scene to establish all the actions and then use cut-ins to things like me pressing the button to this different wide shot to show the rest of the action. All right, so we need to get a sequence going. You can just drop your media over here to create a sequence and what that'll do is it'll create the sequence with the properties of your footage. So for us, that's good because I filmed this on an iPhone. So we've got 1920 by 1080 and we've got a 30 frame rate. So that's good. If you do need to make your own sequence, it is file, new, sequence. And then I would be using the ABC HD and probably one of these 1080p's. Probably this one, this one, or this one. 24, 25, or 30. It's important to know what your footage is and what your sequence is so you know how it's gonna export out at the end. If you've got a 1920 by 1080, sequence and you're putting 720 footage in it, you're going to have black bars all around the outside. And it's not going to look great. On the other side, if you've got footage that's too big for your sequence, different sizes of footage, that's going to cause you some problems as well. So you're going to have to scale things around to make everything look right. So knowing how your project's going to look at the end and what your footage is, is really important. But we could either select this one and go a new sequence from clip, or we can just drag it over. This one, we've got the entrance. So what we'll do is grab the ripple edit tool and click and drag. And what the ripple edit tool does is it actually pulls everything back. So it didn't leave a big gap there at the start for us. There we go. And all we need this one to establish 
that I called the list basically. So I'm just using the arrows to get it just to the right spot. I'm going to get my razor blade tool. I press C to select that. I'm going to cut there. What I'm going to do is get my other piece of footage. And bring it a bit where I'm just on my phone. Give it an in. Pressing this mark in. We'll leave the out. That's the end of the footage. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to drag that in. Cool. So I'm going to select this clip here and I'm going to press shift delete, which is the same as going right click, ripple delete. So there's two different ways to do the same thing. All right, so you'll see, come in. We've got a very obvious jump cut and a problem there, but we're going to cover all that up with our footage anyway. The main reason that we want this first shot is for this, our pressing of the button. All right, so the trick to cutting on action is to make sure that you cut in the middle of a movement. So we've got this clip that we want to cut to where the button's being pressed. Double click on it. Let's open it up here in the source window. Button's already been pressed there, so let's bring this hand in. Now we want the hand to be already in shot. And what this does is it keeps the movement traveling. If we go empty shot, it'll look like I've paused before I got to the button. Whereas if we cut in the middle of this action, it actually looks like the movement continues. It maintains that momentum. All right, so I've set my in, I'm going to press my out. You can use I and O for ins and outs. And I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to pop it up here, which means I'll keep the sound on its own separate channel as well, which is really good. So that movement goes really well. Standing there. Because we've used this cut in, we can also cut in this one and move it across. If we want to keep some of that. So, if we want to keep a little bit of that step back, we can maintain that. I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to grab this bookend here and zoom in. I'm now reaching into my pocket. We'll use that to get our next cut. So we're using all these cut in to keep our momentum going so we're not just watching on one still shot. Last one is this Wes Anderson style shot. Nice and center framed. With a major joke, I mean, not noticing the lift. We might even pull this one up a little bit. This one down. We might even use that sound to carry across the two scenes. So really obvious that I haven't noticed. And that's the end of the scene. Drag that end in. We've got the whole thing done in about 45 seconds. In terms of observing the 180 degree line rule, each shot that we've got has always been with me, with the camera on my right hand side. 
even these straight on shots. Shots here, everything's straight on. I don't ever shoot from the left hand side because that would actually flip where I sit on the screen and make things look weird. The way we've done it is I'm always looking from left to right. All right, that's our whole sequence done. It's rough, but it's a rough cut. That's as good as it needs to be. It establishes where everything is. We can go in and tighten things up. We can sort out the sound. But we've got our cutaways. We've got our action. It's good enough for us for now. All right, so we're going to export it out. We're going to go File, Export, Media. All right, so in our export window, we want our format set to H.264. That's our compressor that gets us an MP4. From our presets, I'm gonna use the Vimeo 1080p. You could use the YouTube version of the same thing. We're going to make sure that we name it correctly. I'm gonna make a new folder in here for my exports. I'm gonna call it Rough Cut Monday. Last thing I'm going to do is press export. And that's it done. Remember to check in at the live class to see a more in-depth explanation of some of these concepts. Good luck. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on the screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.